Well, I'd like to invite you to open in your Bibles to Psalm 46 this morning, Psalm 46, and we're going to begin looking at verse 1 and also verse 10 uh, this morning. But you know, our world is really in a state of unrest. Our world is really in a state of troubleness. Uh, and everywhere, everybody, people are searching today. People are searching for peace. Uh, they're searching for joy. They're searching for security. Uh, they're searching for all kinds of things. And you know, uh, it's not just this new outbreak of this virus. That's, that's not uh, really all that I'm talking about. I'm talking about in general, people are searching and everybody seems to be in a state of unrest. Uh, now, I'll say this about this new virus outbreak. You know, I'll read one post on Facebook and I'll say, well, that's not a big deal. It's not going to be bad. And then the next post I read, uh, I'm like scared to death. And then the next post I read, it's a big, it's a big conspiracy theory. And so the truth is there is a lot of unrest. There is a lot of, uh, of things that we don't know, but I, there's one thing that I know, and this is what I want to talk about this morning. It's great to know that regardless of what happens in this life, there is peace that we can have as children of God. Isn't that wonderful? That if life were flipped upside down and everything that we're used to and everything that we know about this life, if it all fell out of control, we still as children of God can have peace. We still can have a sense of security. And listen, my friend, I want to tell you this morning, one thing that this reminds us is this, the Lord is coming back again, isn't he? And, and listen, it, it, we don't need to pinpoint the time. What we need to do this morning, we need to be ready for Jesus if he were to come right now. We need to be ready for the Lord to face him if we were to go to God right now in judgment. And so what this passage of scripture tells us today is this, we have a sure hope. We have a sure hope. Uh, we have a power that we can tap into. We have a gold mine in the Lord. And we have a God that we can trust no matter what happens. I want to invite you to stand with me. Let's notice in this text, Psalm 46 and verse 1. Psalm 46 and verse 1. The Bible says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Then notice with me in verse 10, the psalmist says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Let's bow together and let's pray this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your blessing. Lord, we thank you for your word and for your Holy Spirit. And God, we pray now that you'd take control of this service and whatever needs to happen, we pray that it will happen. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Thank you. And you can be seated. This psalm this morning that we've read, this psalm encourages us to trust in Almighty God. This psalm encourages us to trust in the power of God. We can trust the power of God. We can trust the providence of God. Uh, we can trust in the presence of God. And this psalm encourages us that when life gets crazy, when life gets hard, when life gets messy, when life gets out of control, that we have have a refuge this morning. We have a place that we can go to. We have a place of security. We have a refuge that we can cling to. And let me tell you this, regardless of what we see going on in our world today, you don't need another case of toilet paper. We need Jesus Christ. We need a refuge today. We need, you know, we see our economy, it's on the brink, and everybody seems to be on edge. But I want you to understand today, we have a refuge that we can run to today. We have a a place of security. And listen, children of God, we need to get vocal about that place. I'm going to tell you, we need to use the time that we're living in to get people to the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to use the platform that we have that God has given to us to bring others to Jesus Christ. When things get difficult, when things get scary, and valleys get low and mountains get high, we have a strength according to this psalm. We have a refuge and we have a strength. This psalm comes after David had great victory over all the neighboring nations. And he looks back and he makes these statements about God. David could rest in God to give him victory over every enemy. 
He could rest in God to give him victory over all enemies. And this morning, I want, you, I want to encourage you, we don't have to fight for victory. We fight from victory as children of God. That we can have peace in troubled times. We can rest in God, our refuge, and our strength, and trust that he fights for us. Now, I want you to notice three things with me this morning. It will be through. First of all, notice this. Take comfort in his person. Take comfort in his person. Notice what he says in verse 1. He says, he doesn't say that religion is our refuge and strength, does he? Uh, he doesn't say that people are our refuge and strength, but he tells us triumph in God. And he says, God is our refuge and our strength. He said, God is with us. God is for us. Does that do anything for you this morning? I'm going to tell you, it should do something for you, that the God of the universe, God is with us. God is for us. And notice some of the things he says about him. First of all, he says he's our present help. Notice in verse 1, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. I like the wording there, don't you? He's not a present help in trouble. He is a very present help in trouble. He is, he is right there. He is close by. He is our refuge and our strength. And the word refuge here in verse 1 means a shelter from danger. He is our shelter from storms or from danger. He is our place of hope, our place of trust. What if the economy turns upside down? Is God your refuge this morning? What if there is an outbreak uh, and, and, and it really does get serious? Is God your refuge this morning? Is he your strength? Listen, if, if something happens to me, understand this, that when I take my last breath here, I'm going to take my next one there. And I'm going to tell you, friends, if you got God as your Savior and if he is your Lord, then you really can't lose, can you? Whether we stay here or we go on to heaven, we really can't lose if God is our refuge, if he is our, if he is our shelter from storm or danger. Listen, is the enemy after us? There's a refuge. There's a safety. Are storms raging in our world today? There's a secure place with solid dry ground. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 10 Listen to what the writer writes there in Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 10. He says there, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. We have a refuge today. That's what the psalmist is telling us. We have a, we have a strong tower. We have a place where there is safety and security. Listen, do troubles mount in our day? Of course they do. Do we have much work to do? Does the task seem too large? Does the road seem too long? Does the hill seem too high? Here's what he tells us this morning. We have a strength, y'all. We have a strength, we have a might, a boldness, a power. In fact, Paul said it like this in Philippians chapter 4. He said, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. He gives us a strength. He gives us, he gives us peace and he gives us this refuge. He will bear us up in our burdens. He will put his strength into us. And what that means to me is this, where I can't, he will. Where, where I am weak, he is strong. Where it's impossible to me, he is able. His strength will be given to us. If we're in distress, he is our help to do all for us that we need. He is our present help, the psalmist says here. And listen, it's been tried through the ages, hasn't it? He is our present help. Uh, our help is at hand. It is always near. It is a help that regardless of my circumstance, it is a sufficient help. Regardless of, my, uh, of what's going on in life, whatever the need is, in every case, he is a present help in times of trouble. He is a sufficient help. Now I want you to notice also he is, he is our protector. Look with me in verse 2. He says, therefore... 
because he is our refuge and our strength, because he is a very present help in trouble. He says, therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea? How much fear have you seen this week? Unprecedented, right? We've seen fear. What, how should the child of God respond uh, as, as to the things we've seen this week? We should, we should respond uh, not in fear, but in boldness. Not in panic, but in peace. Why? Because God is our refuge and strength. And so he says, because he is ever present, because he is our help in times of trouble, he says, therefore, will not we fear, but notice this. Though the, the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea. Now, think about how big that is of a statement that the psalmist makes there. He's not talking about though we stomp our toe, uh, you know, we're not going to fear. He, he's, he's talking about some big things, isn't he? He says, though the earth be removed, we won't fear the power of hell or the earth. The New Testament says this, if God be for us, who can be against us? He says, if the earth be removed, if all earthly confidences fail us, he says, we're not going to, fe to fear. He says, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, what is the strongest, most firm part of the earth? A mountain, right? And he says, if this mountain be picked up and cast into, if, if what we know to be the firmest thing in the earth, if it is to be picked up and to be placed in the ocean, he says, we're not going to fear. We're not going to fear. Why? Because God is our refuge and our strength, and he is a very present help in times of trouble. Notice in verse 3. He says, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. Though, though the seas roar and they trouble and, and the mountains shake, though the world be in confusion, though there be wars and rumors of wars, though there be evil, though there be problems, though we see the, the, the Bible unfolding in our day, he says, we're not going to fear. We're not going to fear. We will not fear. Notice Psalm 93 and verse 4, what the psalmist says. Psalm 93 and verse 4, the Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters. What, what did he just say in verse 3? Though the waters there are, therefore roar and be troubled. Then you go to Psalm 93 and verse 4, the Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters. Yea, than the mighty waves of the sea. If the earth is removed, listen, we have laid up treasures in heaven. This earth, one of these days, is reserved for what? For fire and judgment. That's what the Bible says. One day the earth will melt with fervent heat. But let us trust the rock that is higher than I. Let us trust the rock that is sure and steadfast. And then I want you to notice he is our provider. In verse 4, when the waters roar, notice he talks about a river. He says, there is a river. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. He says, there is a river. In the middle of cloudy days, dark days, the psalmist brings up a river. And the streams, I don't believe, are rapid, but they're gentle. Now think about it. Where do people live? in the Amazon or wherever, where do people live? By the river, why? <laughs> life. The river is, is the source of life. It is a source of food. It is a source of water. It provides all that we need, and it, it is a sustaining thing. And notice the psalmist says, in the middle of all of this chaos, he says, there's a river. There's, there's a source, there's a stream that's flowing and dear friends, I've got to tell you about this this morning because the Holy Spirit behooves me, but there was a stream that flowed from Calvary's cross some 2,000 years ago. And it is the only source giving life. It, it is the only thing that will give to us eternal life is what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross of Calvary. Listen, God is still God. 
God is still God. He's with us. He'll help us. And notice he is our power in verse 5. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. And that right early. He, he's talking about deliverance here. If he is our help, then who can hurt us? And he says he'll do it right early. What does that mean? That means he'll do it speedily. And you say, well, I'm waiting on God. Well, listen, God, God's got a perfect timing. He'll do it just at the right time. He'll do it speedily. He'll do it just at the right time. May we trust and not be afraid that everything is well and all will end well. And so we can take comfort this morning in his person. All those things that, that he, he talks about that God is. But notice, secondly, we can take comfort today in his power. We can take comfort in his power. Notice in verse 6 what he says in this psalm. The heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. Notice this. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. To me, you know what the psalmist just told us? He's in control. Can you get on board with that today? <laughs> You're not in control. God is in control. And he says here, he uttered his voice and the earth melted. Listen, one time in the Bible, there was a large number uh, that were, they were fighting against Israel and they were the Assyrian army. But how many of you know this morning that God plus nothing or no one is always a majority? And it looked bad for Israel that time that the Assyrian army has, has outnumbered them. And the Bible says that the angel of the Lord went through their camp in one night and smote 185,000 people. Let me tell you what that tells me, dear friend. God is in control. I'm so thankful this morning that God is my God and that there is nothing, absolutely nothing that happens that he, he is not big enough to handle, that he doesn't know is coming. He is in control. Think about in the Old Testament at the Red Sea, Moses and, and uh, Pharaoh found out that God was in control, didn't he? Why? Because he had them, I mean, the, the, the Egyptians had them right where they wanted them. The sea is ahead of them. The Egyptian army is behind them. Moses raises up that rod, and what happens? The waters part, and they walk across on dry ground. I'm going to tell you, Pharaoh learned that day that God was in control. A little old shepherd boy named David goes down in the valley to face this giant Goliath. And I'm going to tell you, the Philistines found out that God was in control. Some 2,000 years ago, when that, when that stone was rolled away from that tomb, you remember that story, don't you? Some 2,000 years ago, why was that stone rolled away? Jesus didn't need the stone rolled away so he could get out. Nothing could hold him in there. But he rolled that stone away so that you and I could look in and see that it's empty. And the entire world found out what? That day that God is in control. God is in control. And that's what he's telling us in this psalm, that he is in control. That's not up for debate. And listen, if he is your God, you can take comfort in that. Turn off CNN and get in the book. Turn, turn off everything and plug in with God. Get in the altar somewhere. Get in the prayer closet somewhere and call on this God who is in control. Because I'm going to tell you, there are times it may appear that all hope is gone, but Jesus is our hope. Jesus is our help. And Jesus, he is able. Notice also, he is our cover. Look with me in verse 7. In verse 7 of this psalm, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Here's the second time he uses this word refuge in this psalm. But this time in verse 7, this word refuge is different than the first uh, time he used the word refuge in verse 1. It's a different word. And what this word means is a high place, a high tower, or a place of strength. You know, I used to say it in Getty over in the Holy Land by the Dead Sea, that there are many high places with caves, but now I've seen those places. I've seen caves, and I've seen th these little animals that are called conies 
Some are called high rocks. But these small animals, they find their refuge in these high places over there in Israel. And they still do today. But I want you to notice Proverbs chapter 30 with that in mind. Listen to what he says in, in Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 26. He says there, the colonies are but a feeble folk, yet make they their houses where? <laughs> in the rocks. Why do they make their houses in the rocks? Because there's a covering for them there. They're weak, they're feeble, and they find shelter, they find a high place or a place of strength in these rocks. Now, now listen, no matter how small or feeble we may feel, look at it again. He says, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. No matter how small or feeble we may feel, we have a high rock. We have a high place of strength, a place of refuge. And thank God we can go to the rock called Jesus and we can be safe. God took care of his people. Notice in verse 8 and verse 9 of, our, of this psalm. He says, Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolation, desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in fire. God took care of his people. Listen, he's in control. He's in control of the affairs of men and nations and the best thing that we could do as a nation would be to surrender to the will of God the best thing we could do as a church would be to fall before God and make sure that we are right and where we need to be and intercede for this country that we're blessed to live in. The best thing that could happen is for our country, America, to turn to the Lord, to surrender to his will. May I tell you this morning, let the Lord take care of your battles and your burdens. He's in control. He's our covering. And then I want you to notice thirdly, in this text, we can take comfort in his presence. We can take comfort in his presence. Look at the command that he gives in verse 1. He says, be still. Be still. Be quiet. You know what I found out about our world? It's very loud. <laughs> There's a lot of noises, aren't there? turn on the news there's noise and we've grown so accustomed that we don't like the quiet and maybe we don't like the quiet because it puts us one on one with our maker I don't know there's something uncomfortable about stillness maybe you're one of these people you got to have noise Is anybody like that got to have noise Got to have noise all the time. Here's the command, be still. And that, that word still means to be idle or to cease. Be still. Take a time out on the hustle and the bustle of the world that we live in. Relax, take it easy. Be still, consider and wait on the Lord. Don't fret. Don't get angry. Don't get bitter. Talk to the Lord and take it to him. He says, be still and know. That word know means to be familiar with like a friend. He says, be still and know that I am God. He is our greatest friend. Be still and know. Man, it would do us a world of good this morning to just be still. Let me show you how uncomfortable that is. You ready? Something ought to be happening, right? Be still and know that I am God. Notice the clarity in verse 10. He says in verse 10, he says, I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. He will be exalted by every creature. What an awesome thing 
Listen, for ages, the Lord has been ridiculed. He's been mocked. He's been denied. People are saying, you know, you Christians, y'all been preaching how the Lord's going to come back for all these years, and it hadn't happened yet. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming again, and one of these days, all will bow before him. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, and finally he will be exalted like he, is, like he deserves. We can bow now or we can bow later, but here's the, here's the truth. All people will bow. And then notice the closeness in verse 11. Like a chorus in a song, he repeats this. The Lord of hosts is with us. Though the mountains be picked up and thrown into the sea, the Lord of hosts is with us. Though things get turned upside down in our life, and maybe things like we've always known it get turned upside down, the Lord is with us. And he says again, the God of Jacob is our refuge and then he uses that word selah you know what that word means if you read through the psalms you'll see that word throughout the psalms what that means is pause pause it, it, it means to meditate on what he's saying what does he want us to meditate on well in verse 7 you see that word in verse 3 you see that word the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. And he says, meditate on that. Meditate on that. Almighty Jehovah who rules all the hosts of heaven and earth is with us. And I want you to understand this this morning. No matter what's going on in your life, meditate on this. He is with you. No matter what may come up, no matter the situation, no matter what we may deal with or face, the God of Jacob is our refuge. The Lord is with us. I couldn't imagine going through this life without the Lord. I couldn't imagine as we see the word of God unfold and as the days draw closer to the end of time, facing this life without the Lord, our refuge. Man, no wonder there's chaos. No wonder there's a sense of unrest. No wonder there's a lack of peace. Because without Jesus, there is no peace. Without him. Now let me ask you this this morning as we get ready let's prepare for a song of invitation let me ask you this question today are you ready for eternity are you ready if you were to die right now are you ready to face God are you ready for eternity because here's here's the thing about it we don't know when the Lord will return we don't know when our last day, our last breath on the earth is, but we know two things. Number one, the Lord will return. And number two, we will have a last breath. And so the important thing is not to try to pinpoint when that will be and try to get right before that happens. The important po point is this, be prepared for that time to happen any time. Have you prepared this morning? I've got good news for you. Today, if you're here and you're lost, you could be saved when you leave this place. Your eternity could change. Your whole life could change by one decision coming to Jesus Christ. Let me tell you the good news. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life can you imagine getting to heaven standing before God and God saying why should I let you in you say well I tried to do more bad more good than I did bad can you imagine that can you imagine saying well I was a member of Austin Chapel that's why you should let me in
Could you imagine getting to the, getting to the gates of heaven and saying, well, you know, I was baptized. That's why you should let me in. If we could get in that way, why would God send his only begotten son to die in our place? The only way you'll prepare for death is accept Christ as your Savior. Put your faith, your trust in him. Call on him to save you. And listen, if I was lost, I'd do that today. I'd be saved this morning. And then notice this. He is our present help. Right now, he is there. He is present. He is there to help us. I remember back in school, the teacher would call names on the roll. And if we were there, we'd say, here, present. What that mean? We were in the room. <laughs> Listen, the psalmist says the Lord is the present help. What does that mean? He's in the room. He is right here. He is very present. He is with us. And when he comes, all believers will be in him. Take, take some time this morning, as verse 10 tells us. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. And let me tell you something, child of God. You look up here at me. What an exciting time for us to be alive. Let's shine for the Lord. Let's tell others about the peace in troubled times. Let's stand together this morning as we as we sing what number? <laughs>